for our next two learning objectives, we're going to look at how to combine rational expressions. So rational expressions just means, again, rational means there's some division bar. Expression means it's not an equal sign. So we're just kind of working with some uh, arbitrary amount of fractions, and we want to combine them into kind of simpler things. So in this uh, learning objective, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing. Right, before we look at uh, multiplying and dividing, uh, rational, so we get how to just simplify them. So just like we would with 20 over 10, we'd want to say 20 is 2 times 10, and 10 is 1 times 10. And we can cancel out those common factors. Whenever there's multiplication on the top and bottom, you can cancel out those. And this name is 2 over 1, which is 2. All right, so 2 is simpler than 20 over 10. 9x squared over 3x, well, 9 is 3 times 3. X squared is x times x, 3x is 3 times x, and again, you can cancel out things that are common on the top and bottom. That gives me 3x. All right, so we always want to try to cancel out things on the top and bottom. If there's the same thing on the top and the bottom, we want to cancel it out. Uh, the important thing is there has to be multiplication between these different parts when you decide to cancel. If this was 3 plus x over 3, uh, you cannot cancel out those 3s because of the plus sign there. All right, the difference if there's a plus sign or a multiplication sign. So only cancel things out when it's multiplication, not addition or subtraction. All right, so say we wanted to simplify this expression. Right? A lot of people will be tempted to cross out these x's because there's an x on the top and x on the bottom, but that x has a minus sign next to it, not a multiplication symbol. This x has two subtractions next to it. So we can't cancel out those x's uh, because that's not how simplifying fractions work. You have to write it as multiplication. What we can do is if we leave the top the same, it's not much we can do at the top, the bottom is a quadratic, which means we can factor it. So if we think about factoring, we're looking for the two numbers that multiply to give this number and add to give this number. And that's gonna be, let's see, negative six and negative one. It's gonna be negative three and positive two. Right, but now on the bottom, I've changed it to multiplication between two different parts. I have x minus three times x plus 2. So now I can take this whole x minus 3 on the top and cancel it out with this whole x minus 3 on the bottom. And that gives me now 1 on the top. Or whenever you cancel something out, it gets replaced by a 1 and just x plus 2 on the bottom. All right, so this is what we mean when simplifying. Same thing we did with numbers, but now we have to break down these expressions into smaller parts. All right, so go ahead and try this one on your own. Try to simplify this rational expression. And here's how you do it. At top, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give 4 and add to give 5, and that's going to be 4 and 1. As right, so we factor the top, as we would just factor any quadratic, and now you see there's an x plus 4 in the top and an x plus 4 in the bottom. We can cancel those out. They go away, and the only thing that's left over is that x plus 1. Again, right, technically, this is x plus 1 over 1. When you divide by 1, it just goes away. So it's just x plus 1 is the simplest way you could write your final answer. Right, so now that we know how to simplify fractions, we can talk about multiplying and dividing. All right, so dividing fractions, remember if you're dividing fractions, you can always do keep, change, flip. So you keep the first fraction the same, you change the division to multiplication, and you flip the second fraction to its reciprocal. All right, so we've did this before uh, in our very first unit. Right, it's not gonna be any different now that there's x's involved. All right, but when you do that, you change the division to multiplication, so then it turns into a multiplication problem. And when you multiply fractions, that's the easy one. You just go across the top and across the bottom. So when you have two fractions, you just multiply those two top pieces and you multiply those two bottom pieces. All right, so let's say this is our example. We want to take x minus 1 divided by x plus 3. All right, so this is one rational. And we want to divide it by our second rational, x plus 4 over x plus 3. All right, whenever you're doing a division problem with fractions, you always change it into a multiplication problem, so x minus one over x plus three, times, flip the second fraction to its reciprocal, x plus three over x plus four. And now I wanna multiply across the top and bottom, so on the top I'm gonna get x minus one times x plus three over x plus three times x plus four. And here's one mistake students will make, they'll make the problem more complicated than it has to be, so they'll foil out the top and they'll foil out the bottom, and then they'll try to simplify it, but when you want to simplify, you want things broken down into the smallest pieces already. So here we already have it broken down into different factors. And we can see that there's an x plus 3 on the top and an x plus 3 on the bottom. So those cancel out. And I'm just going to get the x minus 1 on the top 
over the x plus four on the bottom. All right, so don't multiply these things out until the very end. All right, if you can cancel stuff out, cancel it out because it's gonna make your uh, fraction a lot simpler. All right, so here's an example. Same thing, we're dividing, so the first thing we're gonna do is change this division problem to a multiplication problem. Times, we're gonna flip the second fraction. And now when I multiply them together, again, I just multiply across the top, those are gonna get multiplied. I multiply across the bottom. Those are gonna get multiplied. All right, and this is technically the correct answer. Now it's a single fraction, but we wanna simplify our fractions all the time. Uh, so to simplify, we need to break everything down to its smallest pieces. All right, the top is already done because they're just single X's, but the bottom we have these two quadratics, so we can factor those. All right, so you can see factoring quadratics is not gonna go away at any point. This one, multiply to three, add to negative four, that's gonna be negative three and negative one. All right, so that's the first quadratic factored. The second one, multiply to eight, add to six, that's gonna be four and two. Right. So we've taken these big quadratics on the bottom, broken them all down into their smaller pieces, and now we see whether well, there's an x plus four on the bottom and that x plus four on the top. There's an x minus one on the bottom, and that x minus one on the top. And again, if you get rid of everything by canceling out, that leaves you with a one. On the bottom, we have the x minus three left and the x plus two left. All right, so really, these problems are just a lot of factoring and kind of figuring out where you can cancel things out. All right, you could leave your final answer like this, or if you want, you could FOIL it out and say this is x squared minus x minus six. All right, either one of these answers would be acceptable. All right, ones, it all kind of depends on which situations, which ones are more useful. Uh, so either one of these is a, a fine final answer, right? but you should be able to fully simplify it, breaking down your fractions into their smallest pieces and then canceling things out. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own, multiply, or sorry, divide these two rationals. And here's the final answer I got. So first thing, change it to multiplication, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. All right, in this case, you only had this one quadratic, so you factor that one, all right? Multiply the negative four, adding to zero is negative two and positive two. All right, you cancel out the one common factor on the top and bottom, and then get your final answer here. And again, that final answer is fine if you wanna stop there, all right? That's uh, perfectly acceptable. If you want to, you can FOIL out the bottom and then get that as your final answer. Again, it all depends on which scenario you're in, which one's more useful in general. So just for this objective, it's probably better just to keep it in the factored form because it's less steps. All right, so for this one, you're gonna demonstrate your mastery by doing uh, practice problems on Delta Math. All right, Delta Math a lot of times breaks the problems down into levels. All right, so you're gonna have to do more problems at level one because those are kind of the basic ones, the ones you should be able to do in kind of less steps. All right, so do a few of the level one uh, problems. And then level two just involves more factoring and canceling stuff out. So I want you to do a few of the level two ones as well, just to make sure you're understanding and being able to do problems that require factoring quadratics as well. All right. All right, but get on Delta Math, I right, do those practice problems, and when you've completed them all, you can move on to the next learning objective.